Welcome to the Lynn Community Television Show. I'm Sean Donahue. Here with me today we have Mike Sweeney of the Lynn Veterans Department. And we're here today to talk about veteran services and the transition for veterans when they're reassimilating into society. Mike, thanks for being here oh, today. Thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, first and foremost, I want to talk about your department overall, but I'd like to give our viewership a little bit of insight as to who you are and what you do. Um, again, my name is Mike Sweeney. I'm the Director of Veteran Services for the City of Lynn. Uh, um, I'm Except for the almost five years I've been on active duty in my life, I've lived in Lynn my whole life. Uh, I've been in this job now about 10 or 11 years. The Lynn Department of Veteran Services is what you might want to call it, a one-stop shop for veterans. You come down, and we, we can, if we don't have, if we, we do VA claims, we help with health care, we run an assistance program for veterans and their families. Um, one of the things we pride ourselves on is if we don't do it, we'll get you in touch with the people that do. Um, I think it's one of the things that uh, we, we had spoken about earlier. I think that the uh, Lynn Department of Veteran Services is, is, is part of a bigger network of, of offices throughout the state, local veteran service departments. And uh, unlike any other state in the country, uh, Massachusetts makes sure through uh, Mass General Law that every city in town has a veterans agent or a veteran service officer in their community that's there to answer questions and, and, and uh, help and assist veterans and their families. And I think uh, the, the benefit of that, the benefit of that, frankly, is, is the, uh, something I know from having gone through it, is when you come home, they, the military gives you a, an awful lot of uh, information. Right. But that, having that person at the, and, and websites, and there's, there's websites, and there's books, and there's all kinds of great information out there, because there really are uh, incredibly helpful benefits for veterans and their families. But it's very difficult for some veterans, and I know uh, myself included, if I didn't, uh, the, it's the, the context someone providing that local context is critical. And I think that veterans agents in, um, in every city in the Commonwealth do that very well. Uh, for example, you may know you're eligible for VA health care benefits. Then you get home and say, well, what does that mean? Where do I go? Well, we have right. a VA clinic here in the city of Lynn, and, and uh, we can make sure that veterans get in, in connected with those services. And the more uh, local your services are, I think the more likely you are to use them. But I think having the ability to come down, speak to a veteran one-on-one, -on -one, someone who's been through, if not the same thing as you, understands uh, what you've been through. And frankly, these days, too, I think we are doing a much better job of recognizing what the families are going through. Because when we deploy, our families in a very real way deploy with us. Now, the veterans, anybody who's watched this show, um, know I have a soft spot in my heart for them. Um, as an American citizen, we know that war is a big part of our country here and the development and keeping freedom free. Um, these are people who dedicate themselves and are sacrificing their lives to go defend for people just like us, people they've never met before. And we you just touched on this, we were talking about it before the program, that Massachusetts is one of the only states that provide a state-funded program like right. yours. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, the only state. The only state. So, you know, from, from my perspective, this was brand new. This was news to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of these guys come back from war, um, you know, and they've developed a bond and they've developed a culture in, with, within mm -hmm. these branches of the military, and then they have to reassimilate in society. Luckily, in Massachusetts, we have departments like yours. Um, but, I mean, if you're from a southern state, you can expect to stand in the welfare line with anybody else who needs the state benefit. Right. Uh, what they've done in historically, Massachusetts, uh, all the way back to the Civil War, at the local level, it provided benefits for needy veterans and, and widows uh, after that war. And um, in some way, it's, it's uh, gone all the way back to the Revolutionary War. After World War II, it was codified a little more uh, directly. And now, what you have is. The, not, not just, again, having these offices that are in town halls, but as you just touched on, Sean, what you just touched on was a, 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 a program of public assistance for veterans and their families. And I think that I'm proud of that. At the City of Lynn, we, this year alone, uh, we're spending close to $1.3 million in direct aid to veterans and their families. That money then is, uh, when we spend that money, we are reimbursed by the state 75% uh, a year later for it. But I, I think it, that sort of partnership between the local uh, government in the uh, in the state is 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 seen nowhere nowhere in the country. We should be very proud of it. Our leadership and I, I think we have a we've been lucky here in the city of Lynn, the city council, Mayor Kennedy. Um, they've been very uh, very helpful in, in letting us do our job and asking us what resources we need to get those done. In other communities in the Commonwealth, it's not quite so easy. Uh, they they have a little sticker shock when they look at the program. Right. I think here, uh, I'm very proud of in the city of Lynn. We've never had that. 
And I think the way these uh, benefits are, are real life savers for people. And, and we talked about um, people coming home, and sometimes you don't need those public assistance benefits, but we can sit down with that veteran and, and, find, and their family member and find out what's going on. Do they need help with the VA? Do they need to go to school? Do they need that public assistance? It's a state benefit. Um, I know in, uh, many of them, I, I just got back uh, from Afghanistan last December. Right, I'm thank you for your service. Oh, thank you, I'm currently serving in the Army National Guard. Many soldiers come home just in my unit and they, were, they may not need that financial assistance now, but having that connection where you come into your local town hall, someone helps you with your VA paperwork, your welcome home bonus and all those different things, it allows you to know that they're there. So if, God forbid, you do need help going forward, uh, we're there and they know to find, where to find us. And I think that that's the strength of the program. There are tons of incredibly good programs run by the VA uh, and, and other, other groups of VA uh, specifically that are great, but they're, they're not really at the local level. And we pride ourselves at connecting our veterans with those, those uh, programs. And if we, if we aren't doing that, we're not doing our job well. Sometimes it takes a, takes a long time to, to get people help. And I think coming down and talking to the same person and not getting a 1-800 number and not going right. to a, a line, going back to that context. It provides that context. It, is, is, uh, it, 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 it just is so critical. I, I went through so many briefings coming home where, um, where you would hear people talk about the benefits that were available to you. Well, at the end of the day, if you don't know where to go to access them, right. it doesn't do you a lot of good. Right. It, it's, it's an objective good thing that veterans know what they're eligible for, but how to access them in, in a real way is very is, is is daunting for an awful lot of veterans and and going back to their families especially their families because in the speaking for myself and the guard uh you don't have that relationship far too often families don't have that relationship like you would if you were on an active duty post you don't know you don't have 10 of your friends that are that are deployed with your husband right right <laughs> so you don't and so in the national guard and the reserves they do a great job of trying to work through these uh, they call family readiness groups and give them uh, some help, but if they don't know when, when, the, when the husband comes home, now he's taking the lead or the wife comes home, she's taking the lead and then that spouse is, is sort of left. Right. And if they know where to come and they can come ask questions along with their husband and, and, uh, or, or wife, it, it just, it, it helps cut through the bureaucracy a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that's one thing that is really interesting to me is that, you know, there's, there's a set infrastructure here in the state of Massachusetts to help reassimilate mm -hmm. these guys in a society. And we were talking before the show, a big one throughout the entire country are veterans who are homeless, mm -hmm. uh, veterans who are committing suicide, killing themselves because they can't reassimilate in society. I mean, programs like we have here in the Commonwealth would probably help deter those numbers and lower them. Um, some of the biggest things that we, you know, veterans have to deal with is you know, even just like everyday people have to deal with. It's hard to not look at them as heroes with all of the media and the movies that you see today, but they're people. And they are people who deserve a, a second chance considering that they've gone, put their whole life aside so that they can travel overseas and fight with other forces in cooperation to just to eradicate terror and eradicate evil. And these are guys who set out and they've accepted the fact that they're dead before they've even left. When they come back to America, they deserve these benefits and they deserve the cooperation of the citizenship. Right. I'm not, I mean, you know, uh, I've, never, I've never had the, the liberty to fight for America. Um, I take a great deal of pride in being an American citizen. I create, create, take a great deal of pride in the veterans. And every single veteran I see, whether they have a hat or a sticker, you make sure to thank them. Um, <clears throat> what was really baffling to me and scary to me was when we were talking before the show. And I'm under the impression that all 50 states have a program just like yours. But that's actually not the case whatsoever. No, and, and as I touched on before, what every, what every state has is you'll see veteran uh, officers in the county. You'll see county veterans officers. And they do help with the VA and they help with uh, VA claims and VA health care benefits and getting people hooked up with those. What they don't have is, is we talk about this, this public assistance under Mass General Law Chapter 115 that really is, uh, I mean, is a, it's a lifesaver for so many families, especially and, and widows. Uh, when you're looking at our seniors, the demographics of the military are changing. There's a lot more uh, women serving, but in terms of the demographics of our seniors, when they were in, mostly it was mostly men. So you have we have, I mean, just an incredible number of widows who we help every month, 
Um, and, it, and it really is, it's not just a financial issue, it's a dignity issue. Um, you can help them with their health care costs. Anyone under, uh, what I would say is anyone under 200% uh, of the poverty level, uh, which is for a single person about $2,000 a month in income uh, with, all, with you know, limited savings, a few thousand, less than a few thousand dollars in savings, they should come down and see us in our office and, and apply for some help. I mean, uh, we, even if the answer is no, it, it makes sense to come down and we can find yeah. out what's going on because that the under, if it, we may not be able to give you a monthly check for living expenses and that's a huge help. Sometimes for our seniors, it's about help with uh, medical expenses. And I know a lot of different, uh, I know seniors, when I first uh, got this job, I've been in the job about 11 years now, I, you understand that people have to make hard choices but when it comes to medication, I, I've seen it with uh, seniors far too often where they don't make the choice, they're, you know, they're not foolish, so they'll take the medication that is going to keep them alive. I've seen, uh, I've seen our seniors, you know, veterans and widows, space out the pain meds more than they should. So they're really living in pain because they don't have the money for all of the medication co-pays that they have. And there's a, really a lot of great programs out there, but sometimes for people in that little... Uh, that they, they're not, they're somewhat below 200% of the poverty level, those co-pays add up. Yeah. And so I think we've been, it's some of the best work we do, um, and, I, and I'm proud of it, and I think anyone, especially our seniors uh, who are having trouble with medical costs, should, should uh, contact our office. And again, you can check it out. Uh, our contact information is on Facebook. Uh, Facebook it's on facebook.com slash Vets, and then uh, we can, you can call us here in City Hall at... Uh, 598-781-598-4000, ask for the Veterans Department, and uh, our office will, will be happy to help you. Uh, Jeffrey and Mary are in there as well to answer right. the phone and uh, do, the, do the good work that we do. Right. Very proud of them. I think that what we find is that the issues that you, when people ask what's going on with veterans, it, as you talk about, this is a bunch of different issues. Sometimes they break down by generation. Sometimes they break down by, uh, by um, socioeconomic status because they, they, it doesn't mean that people don't, aren't coming from a similar place but they have different issues in front of them and we talk about the homeless we've been able here in the city of Lynn to partner with uh, the Lynn Housing Authority um, and neighborhood development to, to really combat uh, homelessness in the city of Lynn work through them with a lot of all, all the other nonprofits in the city of Lynn through the continuum of uh, care uh, which is uh, called the Lynn Pact and uh, the Lynn Housing Authority and their staff they, they have a family success center down there on uh, down State Street. And I tell you, one of the things we've been able to, to do with uh, groups like the Lynn Housing Authority is reach out to people who have expertise in other, other you know, we, we, when I say we're a one-stop shop, we don't claim to, to do everything that right. helps veterans. The Lynn Housing Authority Neighborhood Development, development is clearly the expert in how to get people housed in, 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 in good housing and keep them in that housing. And we work with them every day. They, uh, and they're actually a grantee from the uh, VA now, and they've received money from the VA there uh, through the SSVF program, through VASH, which is um, uh, vouchers for, for veterans who are homeless. And we've really done a great job here in the city of Lynn, where I think we're right now at a point where um, in the near future, um, they're going to uh, you know, be in a position to declare an end to chronic homelessness of veterans in the city of Lynn. It doesn't right. mean we don't have homeless veterans, it just means that we're and someone will become homeless tomorrow. It just, it were, but they're doing such a great job. It's a pleasure to work with them. And we've been, uh, really had some great success. And I think that's one of the things that I'm most proud of in the last uh, few years. We've been able to, to, to really lead the way on that here in the city of Lincoln. What really speaks volumes to me is the collaboration within our city. And I mean, the success rate that you guys have had, I mean, those numbers, it's not a coincidence. There's a correlation there. Oh, there really is, And, yeah. and the more people that you involve and it, with you know, the respective industry that they're in, the more results that you can get. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about veterans um, services right here in the state of Massachusetts. We're here with Mike Sweeney, and Mike's talking to me a little bit about the issues that these guys have when they're reassimilating into society. Uh, today, two of the big ones are homelessness and suicide. But among them, you've also got, you know, families who have to reassimilate. Um, you know, it's not just the soldier going over there to fight. You've got Gold Star families who have had uh, losses. And these people, you know, they're at every single veterans event. They're there and they're supporting other veterans. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a family. Right. It really is. And there's a bond that is created among soldiers in these branches of the military that nobody else in America can really understand right. unless you go through it. I mean, you know, football's a big part of my life. That's about as combative as I've gotten. 
But, you know, when you go through camp and you bleed and you sweat with your teammates, there is a bond that's built right. there. This is a three-day period I'm talking about. You guys are in boot camp for months. Mm -hmm. um, veterans have to be prioritized here in America. We're, we, you know, you, you, you read across the national headlines. And, I mean, the American society is split on, on all cases, except refugees are not. Black versus white, old versus, old versus young, poor versus, uh, versus rich. Mm -hmm. It's just, there is obviously a disconnect um, that the American society is experiencing right now. And I think a lot of that has to do with the exposure to the media. But if we can get back to our routes, okay, the American routes, when it comes down to tradition and it comes down to a sense of community, we might be able to bring this thing back. Um, our big focus in America since I've been able to comprehend anything has always been war. You know, the, the world needs America to participate and the world needs its veterans. So this isn't something that's going away. Look, for those of you at home who are watching, all right, if there's anything that I have to say about this program here is you have to take, take care of your veterans. These are the guys who pack up everything and they go over and they fight against evil so that we can wake up, go to work, eat lunch at the fast food places that we do, and live the amazing lifestyle that we get to live here in America. Um, Mike, I want to say thank you so much for coming up here um, on your busy schedule. Mike Sweeney, director of the Lynn Veteran Services Department. Uh, they're located right here in City Hall. Uh, you can go down, you can give them a call at 598-4000. Uh, just ask for the Veterans Department there. You can also jump on Facebook, facebook.com slash Vets. Mike, thank you so much for coming on the Thanks program. So much, I wish, uh, wish you all the best and keep doing the great work that you guys are doing. Thanks for having me. From the studio here at Lynn Community Television, that's it for the LCTV show. I'm Sean Donahue, wishing you all the best.